In the last section we looked a little bit at writing equivalent fractions, but now we're going to expand on it a little bit more. First of all, if you have a negative out in front of a fraction like this, that is the same as writing it with the negative on the 2, or writing the negative on the 5. Those are both the same as having the negative out front. You can tack it on either the top one or the bottom number, but not both. Because if we would have a negative on the top and on the bottom, those two negatives would cancel out. A negative divided by a negative is a positive, and we would have two-fifths there. So if there's a negative out in front of a fraction, we can tack that negative on the top number, on the bottom number, or leave it out in front, but it's not on both of them. Okay? If we put it on both, then it becomes positive, and these two things definitely are not equal to each other. One's negative, one's positive. Now, when it comes to writing equivalent fractions, one way to get an equivalent fraction is to simplify it. Now, if we have something like this that's already completely simplified, if we want to get an equivalent fraction, we need to multiply. So, let's just take our fraction and bring it over here. And I'm just going to put the negative on the top. Now, to write an equivalent fraction to that, I can multiply it by 2. Okay? We can actually multiply it by any number we want, but 2 is an easy one to work with. So, negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, and 5 times 2 is 10. Negative 4 tenths is equivalent to 2 fifths, negative 2 fifths. To get another equivalent fraction, we could go back to this original one and multiply by a different number. Or if we want, we could just multiply it by 2 here again. So, I shouldn't do this. <coughs> we can multiply this by 2. And that gives us negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. 10 times 2 is 20. That's another equivalent fraction. So, we have lots of equivalent fractions floating around here. Let me just change colors and point them out. This, negative 2 over 5, that's the same as 2 over negative 5, which is the same as negative 4 over 10, which is the same as negative 8 over 20. So we actually have four equivalent fractions. Let's take a look at 3 sevenths. <clears throat> In this one, we don't have any negatives, so we don't have to worry about that stuff. To get a equivalent fraction, again, we can multiply by 2 on the top and the bottom. And 3 times 2, that gives us 6. 7 times 2 is 14. That's equal to 3 sevenths. Okay, and we could see that if we draw a picture divide it into 14 pieces, all the same size, fill in 6, it would turn out that that's the same as a picture divided into 7 pieces with 3 filled in. We can get another equivalent fraction, multiply it by 2 again. Or, we could multiply, go back to the original one, multiply it by 3. So, 3 times 3 gives us 9, and 7 times 3 gives us 21. There we have 3 equivalent fractions. If you want more, you can multiply by any number as long as you multiply by the same number on the top and the bottom.